everyone, I am in my bathroom with terrible lighting, but we're gonna do what we can. And today I tried, tried to recreate the look that I was very lucky enough to learn how to do from a master makeup artist. I am very grateful to have been invited by Laura Mercier to attend a Zoom class that was held by Laura Mercier with a master makeup artist, Hung Van Gogh. You may have seen his YouTube channel. He is so talented and as I learned from watching his master class, not just talented, but super kind, really patient, answered a ton of questions from all of us that attended. Laura Mercier did send me a big box of PR so that we could follow along and try to recreate the look ourselves. They didn't send all the products, and so I'm gonna have to sort of compensate with other products that I have, but it was a lot of fun. I am passing on what I have picked up to you. Hopefully you'll pick up something that's interesting to you. And even if you don't care for this particular look, the technique was fascinating and it might be something you wanna to try to recreate on your own with similar products. If you are interested in hearing about what I learned and how I did this, first attempt, then keep on watching. Here I am, fresh faced. The headband is old from PR. I'm in old pajamas from Soma. If you hear strange noises behind me, the Westies have decided the minute I hit record to start a wrestling match. Oh no. Today, I prep my skin a little bit differently. I do have all of my skincare on, but I used some of the stuff that they sent to me, specifically the Perfect Cream Multitasking Moisturizer. It went on very smoothly. It felt really nice. I didn't notice any fragrance. I like it. And then for my under eyes, I used their Illuminating Eye Cream, and I can tell you I did see some brightening under the eyes when I put it on, so I'll keep you posted on that. You know I love the SkinCeuticals UV Physical Defense Sunscreen. I've been using it in more of an oil version that has tint to it, but when I ran out, the one I ordered in its place was just the regular sunscreen. It's just a white, kind of, I don't wanna squeeze out too much of it, but a little bit of a white cream, you know, the typical stuff. It does leave a little bit of a white cast, until you rub it all the way in. So that's what's on my face right now. And now we're going to follow as closely as I can with the products that I have, the masterclass that Hung Van Gogh did for us on the Laura Mercier Zoom call. So the first thing he did was prep the models perfectly flawless. Her skin looked like it already had a full face of makeup on. I mean, it was flawless, but it was naked. And he used the Pure Canvas Primer. It's one of their newer, primers it is silicone free which makes me very happy because my skin does not love a heavy silicone anything and i'm just gonna put a little bit of that on my hand i think he used a brush to put this on but it smells like nothing it's very lightweight it feels like a very light moisturizer okay today has just not been my day but i'm not starting all over so as you can see i have foundation on i was doing my thing, chit-chatting away, and realized, I don't think the, it's, I don't think it's recording, it wasn't. So let me catch you up on what I was telling you. Um, the master class, the artist, his name is Hung Van Gogh, I'm just gonna call him Hung, it's Hung is his first name, Van Gogh is his last name. Not like, spelled like the artist. He started by, um, after the primer by using their tinted moisturizer. And it's been reformulated since it was originally launched. It's more, more mo supposed to be more moisturizing. It is also supposed to be a little more sheer. And I believe there's two different formulas, one for more oily skin, one for more dry skin. I didn't get that in the PR package. And strangely, I thought I had some already, but I don't. They did send me their Flawless, it has a long name. It is the Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. I have been using this for a couple of weeks now. I, I think it's a little drying on me. My skin, even with the foundation on, looks nothing like this girl's foundation. I mean, her skin was amazing. Okay, the next step was concealing. And so I would say their cult classic, their major, what they're really known for is this guy, the original Secret Camo Concealer. And I will say, I've tried this over the years, Lisa Eldridge, queen of all makeup artists, loves this. I, it's so hard for me to work with. 
it might end up looking amazing, but I just don't have the time and patience to work with this. It needs to be blended. It needs to be warmed up. It's a whole thing. Matching up the right, it, it's just, I don't like it. And I find it to be pretty dry. It might work on blemishes, but it most definitely does not work under my eyes. So they launched something new. They launched the same concept, but in a stick form. On one side, you have the Brighton. It's a little more peachy toned. And on the other side, you have the Correct, which is a little bit more skin toned. And it's supposed to be super easy to figure out what concealer you are if you already know your foundation shade. They have the same numbering system, so like goes with like. In this case, I'm using the foundation in the shade 1N1, which might be, I think it works. It's good enough. And they sent me two, the 0.5 and the 1N. I'm gonna start with the 1N and see where it goes. Why I like this better. I find it still a little bit dry for under eyes. I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest. I think if you are, if you have dry skin, if you are of a certain age, it's, it's drying more so than other concealers. This is creamier than the original for sure. And it's definitely easy to work with. So let's give this a go. I'm gonna start with the correct side. Literally the correcting, not the brightening side. Little backstory on the original, by the way. It was developed on set, like I was mentioning earlier. I think I mentioned that earlier. May have been in the part where I was talking and nothing was filming. And it was developed on set to deal with retouching because back in the day, they couldn't retouch with, you know, Photoshop and Facetune, all that stuff didn't exist, but they still had to get those flawless looks on the models, at least they thought they did. And so this, well, the, the predecessor was developed to address those issues right on set. This works best being blended in with your fingers. The warmth of your hands definitely helps blend it in. Hung did suggest you can use this in a multitude of places. Also use the Brighton side on smile lines, on the tops of cheekbones. We're gonna play with it, but let's correct a little because I have some things that need to be corrected. I just wish this were easier to read. This is super creamy and I don't know what is going on there. I think that's a bug bite, believe it or not. It was like 80 degrees the other day and all the bugs came out to play. He also suggested using it to line, define the outside of your lips. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm gonna put a little bit around the corners of my nose, a little bit here. Another advantage that I will admit I'm seeing with this is it does not get cakey. You can layer it, you can layer it, you can layer it. You can put it on top of already existing makeup. You can touch up throughout the day and it doesn't get gross, cakey, look heavy. So this is definitely something to keep in your purse for on the go. Before we go any further, I am gonna put some of the lip balm on that they sent me. It just comes in a stick, nice pale pink. It's really nothing, it's no color. Ah, oh, it feels like, kind of almost feels like glycerin in that it, or coconut, it's not coconut oil, but that it just melts right into the lips. So I'm gonna put, using the brightening side, see, I don't think that's particularly bright, but I'm so used to using, I think, concealers and highlighters that are far too light for my skin. Let's put them in the smile lines. Because it's more reflective and brighter, we'll reflect the light out and supposed to, in theory, pull up, almost like fill in those lines. I don't think that's happening. I think we're gonna have to eventually address that. And then on the correct side, correcting, not that it's the right side, but the correcting side, let's define those little lips. Just on the outside of the lip itself, to pat that in, I'm gonna use a concealer brush just so I can really get in there. I'll pat in my, other cheek in a second. Now it is time for powdering and Laura Mercier excels in powdering. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do three powders, two now and one at the end, to set under my eyes. I kind of forgot I had this. This is their secret blurring powder and I'm gonna use that to set underneath my eyes. Just pat that on, pressing it into the skin because it's supposed to blur the look of the fine lines underneath your eyes and I do Definitely need to set my concealer or no matter what I do, it creases. We're gonna revisit under the eyes in a minute. Another one of the cult favorites, I mean, huge following has to be their translucent loose powder. And it's interesting because it got brought up in the class, how do they recommend putting it on? And Hung said for everyday real skin looks, he prefers using a brush, 
to sweep it all over the face, but that for more red carpet, editorial, full on glam looks, that's when he recommends you pull out the other cult favorite, the Laura Mercier Puff. The other powder we're gonna talk about later is their secret brightening powder. And he recommends that you do this at the very end after all your makeup is done to touch up underneath the eyes and brighten. I have been doing that the last few days. It really works, I'll show you in a bit, but let's get on to more of the complexion products that have color. So next up is bronze and he loved using the matte radiance baked powder in the shade bronze 01 and I'm going to use the bronzer brush they sent. It's cute. I will say, I find this pulls a little too warm on me, but I'm gonna go with it because we're just trying to duplicate what he did. He likes to use it around the perimeters of the face, to frame the face, to warm it up. So we'll start there. I definitely like the Laura Mercier sort of look. Um, I don't actually tend to follow it, but I do like it. It's more of a natural glam, I'd say very wearable. He does recommend doing the usual like three and E kind of thing. So tops of the forehead, come across the cheeks a little bit, down on both sides. The type of brush you use definitely makes a difference. He also said pull it down the neck because this is pretty fluffy. It's really diffusing the color and actually is working really nicely. I used a, a different brush the last time I used this, which was maybe not as fluffy and too concentrated, and I can see a difference. This is now going on beautifully. He also did not contour. He said that baking and contouring are definitely techniques he uses, but more for red carpet, on camera stuff, not for every day, because while it looks really pretty on the camera, in person, it's a lot, and I would tend to agree. Then he moved on to blush, and in this case he used two different blushes, a lighter shade on the cheeks kind of to lift, and then a darker shade on the back of the face, closer to the hairline. I don't have the blushes he used, so I'm gonna use just the one, and the one I'm gonna go with is Fresco, which is almost like a bronzer tone, and I love it. And they use a much flatter blush brush than I am used to, I like more of a round, tapered small brush. So we're gonna try his technique. Okay, see what, it's more, way more dense than I'm used to. So I'm gonna pat it and then blend. He does recommend something he talked about in the class and we can address it because I just did it, is pulling out your foundation brush or sponge after this step and blending to take down the color and to blend all the shades so he said to run over your blush with it as well as your bronzer just to merge everything along the edges just so there's no obvious lines i can't remember when he did the highlighter part it might have been at the very end but i'm gonna just put it on now and the highlighter of course is my favorite from that face illuminator line and this is in the shade indiscretion and i am using their fan brush to put it on I will say I was watching this Zoom class in the car. I wasn't driving. With my headphones on as we drove through, I think it was Arkansas. Really soft. If you want more, then use a different kind of brush. Let's talk about brows because that's what we're doing next. So Hung recommended using more of a powder shade in the front of the eye and a pencil towards the outer tail just for a softer, more natural look. And he did use an eyeshadow powder from a palette that I don't have. So I'm just gonna use pencil all the way across. And they sent me their eyebrow pencil in blonde. Let's see how this goes. I am making sure that my eyebrow ends where it's supposed to by angling the brush from the corner of my nose to the edge of my eye and up. So it's supposed to go to there, believe it or not. I can't remember what he did to set the brows, but I'm gonna go with my usual NYX Brow Gel in Blonde. Okay, now for the really fun part, and it was very different than what I am used to doing. Well, first of all, he used all caviar eye sticks, and we're gonna start with the one in the shade Tuxedo, which is black, and he used that to line the full line, lid. Now, I have not used an eyeliner, and I can't even tell you when, 
So, and I have not practiced this at all because I wanted this to be the true first impression of trying what I learned in the class. Stay as close to the lash line as I can. And then he used a little blending brush to smudge it. I will say I find it's easier to get more of a precise line by holding it on its side instead of using the tip and just run it along that upper lash line. Okay, let's back it up a bit. I actually did this a little bit wrong. He used one of their long wear eye pencils, not a caviar stick, and he used it in the shade Espresso. Lined the lid and tight lined and did the waterline. Let me see if I can find a brown long wear eyeliner that can duplicate that look. One of my favorites, my Buxom Hold the Line Waterproof Eyeliner in Come Over, and I haven't used this in maybe a year, and it's still as creamy as the day I got it. I am not gonna film myself doing this because this makes me cringe, so one moment, please. He did put a lot more on the corner and wing it up a little bit. The model was Asian, so it's not that she had more lid space, but she does have more space up here. Anyway, I'm going to try to approximate it, and I did just go over the top lids with that same brown liner to try to get the same look. So right now, this is very different than already how I normally do my makeup. So this, to me, is fun. Now we get to play with the caviar stick. So he used the shade Coco all over the lid, and starting at the lower, the lash line, I should say, he kind of avoided the inner corner. And this is so dark, oh my goodness. An interesting discussion came about, about highlighting the inner corner of the eye. And he said, I'm gonna pat with my finger to kind of blend it up. This is so not how I normally do my makeup. He is not a fan of highlighting the inner corner because he said it actually shortens the eye. It cuts it off where you highlight it. Okay, especially in my case, I don't have a lot of lid space. I also clearly have no talent in blending with my fingers. Let's try blending with the brush. So I'm patting, but I'm also kind of shearing it out. I think Amazon just arrived. With my eye open, it's actually pretty cool, but I need to blend this line up a little bit more. I'm gonna pull it up a little bit to the actual top of the eyeball above the crease, and then go back with that brush and blend. I will say this technique definitely requires some patience and a lot of blending. He even did a little bit on the lower lash line, like a little bit. I'm dotting and then blended that out as well. This is the Real Techniques domed shadow brush. And I still have to say of all the brushes I have, if you're trying to blend out cream eyeshadow, this is the one. Let me do the other eye. Now what he did to kind of brighten this up was pull out another caviar stick, and this one is in the shade Copper. So Coco is definitely a matte shade, and he put this on the inner third. Oh, so pretty. And then blended it back with his finger. Look at that. See how it adds some life to this? Do I have a clean finger? Yeah. Look at that is already so much better. Another trick he showed us, which made it look more shinier and helped to blend it out, was he took a brush and he ran it over the top of the caviar stick in copper, and then he blended out the edges. All right, let's finish the eyes. I'm gonna curl my lashes and I'm going to use their mascara, which I've never used before. It is the Caviar Volume Mascara. I will be right back. I'm gonna get dressed after that, and then we will finish this up with lips. I still think I look a little weird, but okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know, it's a little different. I will put the links for this new top. This is from Anthropology, and some new earrings. I just feel like I'm ready for spring and big earrings and fun, and I'm just gonna make it happen, even if I'm just hanging out in my bathroom. So let's do the lips. This is a lot of eye. So he lined with a different liner, but this is the only one they sent me, and this is as close, it's close to the one he used. He lined the lips with chestnut. This one is hazelnut tea. And he's a big fan of overlining the lips, but not to a ridiculous amount. So he basically says, it's gonna be hard to see, because there's not a, this is with lip filler, can you even imagine? Anyway, there is a ridge, like my lip pigment ends here but there's a ridge above it. And he says that's what you need to follow is the ridge, not the actual color of your lips. So let me do that because I can't talk and do that at the same time. 
I'm gonna smudge this a little. He said, if you're gonna overdraw, don't do it on the outer corners, do it around the center of the lip. The lipstick he used was the shade Brune Pale. It's a really pretty nude peachy toned, I'd say. Not a shade I go for. I gotta do something with the lip liner over here, hang on. Okay, we're not done yet. I definitely have to redo my hair. But the last thing he did was go back in under the eyes with the Secret Brightening Powder. Now, if you follow my tutorials, you know that I always use the Trish McAvoy under eye, like the instant eye lift, and that really brightens, and I didn't do it today, and I can definitely see a difference. Now, I did also use darker shades under my eyes, on top of my eyes, but I have a little bit here, and I'm just going to press, press, press. Only on one eye so you can see if it makes a difference. This is with the Secret Brightening Powder. Well, now that the sun is shining. Okay, so this is with the Secret Brightening Powder and this is without. Do we see a difference? I do in person. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick up on it. So here is the final look. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, it's very different than what I normally do in so many ways, but it is fun to try new techniques. This is my first attempt. I definitely have learned that I need to work on blending. This is nothing new, but it's just been reiterated here. I do like the technique of using a matte shade all over the lid and then more of a shimmer metallic shade on the inside, but I think I would change up the colors. I think Coco's a little too dark for me and there are a ton of options in the line, which is good. I like the idea, I didn't get to do it today, but I loved the idea of using two different shades of blush to kind of lift the cheeks. I learned about, well, I wouldn't say I never knew it, but it was nice to get certain techniques just relearned brought up again to the forefront of my mind, like when I line my lips to follow the ridge and not so much the pigment, to use concealer products to lift lines and, and de-accentuate, de-emphasize lines, like putting concealer here or putting it on the tops of my cheekbones for highlighting. I The little tweaks that he does that make him such a master, of course, but little things like I rarely go back in and blend out my bronzer and blush with the foundation brush or sponge to kind of blend everything together seamlessly. It's those little things, the little extra time that he took in doing everything <laughs> that made his look look so much better than what I did today. But what I was going for here was not how to perfect something or how to make me look just absolutely amazing. It was to go out of my comfort zone, to try something new, to follow along with a master. And that was the fun part. I hope you enjoyed this little experiment with me. I do have different Zoom classes that come up from time to time. And if you enjoyed this, let me know. I'd be happy to share more of the things that I learned from true masters, not me. So let me know how you like this in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I will see you in the next one. Bye.